All right. Hello, hello, hello. I hope you guys are all doing well today. Uh, I got a couple interesting articles on the agenda today. I got a, a nice dinosaur head that I was uncovered. I got a, a Geminids meteor shower that's coming up. It'll be too late by the time you watch this, though. And I've got a little bit of information on one of Saturn's moons, so I'll just jump right into it. This should be a pretty short one. All the articles were pretty short, but also very interesting. So in southern UK, off the Jurassic Coast, which is between Hexmith and Studland Bay, they have found one of the most complete plyosaur skulls ever dug up. The plyosaurs typically range around a range of 30 feet, if not a little bit more, in length. And this skull still has around 130 sharp teeth, so very good condition. Dr. Andre Rowe from Bristol University stated that he had no doubt this was like an underwater T-Rex as it could easily prey or have preyed on literally anything in its path. It's 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 still pretty big and it's underwater. It's got good maneuverability. Obviously, I put a picture on there for you guys. Uh, these sorts of finds help find information or piece things of how things were back then, right? Any information from the past is just bringing new information to light or anything you can find. Uh, back then, for example, right now we have saltwater crocodiles have the most powerful jaw of any living animal, yet these plyosaurs easily had double <laughs> their their jaw dropping power so uh they're pretty strong they ate reptiles as well as younger plyosaurs so they cannibals as well they just eat whatever's in their face i wonder how the breeding process was like with these sorts of creatures because it's if they're cannibals how did they kind of they might have been self-sustaining like with eggs and stuff i'm not 100 percent sure stuff to look up later i guess uh the finder his name was Etches. Uh, he states that he believes on his life even that the rest of that plyosaur is in the cliff because he found it just walking by the cliffside and he saw the uh, the snout of the, the head sticking out of the ground. So he assumes the rest of it is all in that cliff. And he stated that this specific cliff is uh, it loses around a foot every year from wind and the ocean and whatnot. So he's hoping that they'll put some effort some time into finding the rest of it before it falls from the cliff and just breaks and it's just pretty much useless so yeah that's pretty much it for that there's nothing more to add to this he found it it's kind of just it moving on to the geminids meteor shower the yearly geminids meteor shower just happened on december 13th going towards the 14th it's an unusual shower due to its consistency as it happens every year and is basically just a trail of giant pebbles now like i said by the time you're watching this, it'll be gone. Like, it won't be here anymore. Uh, it'll, <laughs> it'll be... Not, uh, it'll be... You'll have to wait till next year because I'm posting this. Probably, if I look at the calendar here, on the 17th, and I'm recording this on the evening. Or, I guess, it's, it's around noon of the 13th. I'm looking outside, though, and I'm seeing a lot of clouds in my area, so I hope those clear out by tonight because it would literally be tonight. But, uh, yeah, no, if you mark it on your calendar, you know, you, it's something for next year if ever you guys want to watch it. It's, it's pretty cool. Now, some tips for future reference is uh, to find a spot to let your eyes adapt. Find a place that's really dark as much as you can. And the uh, not, not to use your phone right before to not mess with your eyes is this ability to see the sky properly. Uh, the shower rightfully named appears in the Gemini constellation. So look towards the east, I guess, or at least in this specific case, the Gemini constellations on the east when, uh, when it's going to start. So I'm looking forward to it. Now for my last article here, I've got Saturn's moon, which uh, some more news on the space front, if you will. NASA has confirmed on Saturn's moon Enceladus that there are plumes of ice shooting up from the moon's surface at around 900 miles per hour or 1400 kilometers per hour. Now these geysers seem to be spewing out from a subsurface ocean. Now these tendrils are making scientists ooze with curiosity as to know if there's any organic molecules in this water you know basically early life if there's anything that has signs of existence essentially if it's not just pure water they've developed some technology to be able to fully extract some amino acids from the surface of Enceladus and they will now try to get their hands on some undamaged ice chunks coming out of the geysers there to study now the conversation from this has expanded onto other water bearing moons like Europa which is one of Jupiter's moons to see if they could maybe get samples from ice from there as well obviously with this one it's literally shooting out of the planet so it's a lot easier to kind of just snag it up in a bag and bring it home but uh yeah other moons also have ice sheets ice shards all these sorts of things so we'll see where they go from there and um that's pretty much all i had like i said it was a short one so you guys have a great day and uh like subscribe leave your opinions down below and i'll see you next one see ya peace